Welcome to Attic Raiders Retro Reviews, where this week we're once again delving into a mysterious maze in search of treasure with the 1994 release, Goblin's Gold. Now, <laughs> as you can see, this one's not actually called Goblin's Gold, this is Trollmanden's Labyrinth. This is the Danish edition of this game. Released across Europe, Goblin's Gold was normally released under the English title, but this is one of the few versions of this game with a non-English language title. Literally translated, Trollmanden's Labyrinth means Wizard's Labyrinth or Wizard's Maze. This is another one of those games where the actual game that you're buying can't be seen on the front cover. There's no photograph of the actual game. It's just this nice piece of artwork instead, which is really eye-catching. <laughs> the wizard himself is not three-headed. He's not some kind of freak. He's just looking around himself really, really quickly and in a confused manner. He doesn't know which way to go through this maze and these goblins are trying to stop him at every turn. The point of this game is that the goblins have stolen the wizard's gold and they've hidden it in their underground burrows and the wizard is using his magic in order to get back his gold from them but every so often he uh, gets stopped by one of these goblins and when that happens you have to mark it so you know where those goblins are. If we want to see the actual game that you're buying, we need to turn over for that. And on the back here we've got lots of nice close-up photographs of the actual game itself. Now this game obviously did pretty well for itself at the time. Two years later it was re-released in 1996 by University Games under the name Magical Maze. In that version, the artwork for the game board has been redesigned to make it really nice and colourful with all these rainbow coloured rocks. The wall marker pieces have also been changed slightly. They're the exact same sculpt as in Goblin's Gold, but they've been cast in green plastic instead of red. And another two years later, in 1998, it was re-released in France under the name Magnus et le Pièce d'Or, which means Magnus and the piece of gold, or Magnus and the gold coin. So obviously this wizard character's name must be Magnus. I really like the French box artwork. The wizard on it is nicely drawn and the goblins are great. I love the goblins in the French version. The game board in this one has also been tweaked slightly. It's pretty much the same as in Goblin's Gold, the original but they've added in some extra details like these really grumpy looking goblins staring up at you. I just love these guys. So we've got goblins, we've got wizards, we've got magic coins, we've got walls and a mysterious underground maze. Let's see how those things go together to make a magical magnetic game. The game comes with 30 of these pieces which are used to show where the hidden walls are within the underground maze. The thing is, there's actually 72 hidden walls within the maze, so if you're to find all of them then you've not even got half of the number of markers here that you'd need. Having played this game a fair few times though, I found that you don't actually need all of the markers that are provided, so 30 is a decent number. The marker pieces depict a brick wall with a little goblin peeking out from behind it, his nose and fingers hanging over the top of the wall. In this way, they're actually based on a famous piece of graffiti that originated in World War II. Around 1944, a doodle that became known as Chad or Mr Chad started popping up in the British Army and RAF on walls and in unusual places. A little later, when UK and allied US forces got together, this doodle joined with an American slogan, Kilroy was here, and the now renamed character of Kilroy spread around the world. So although this is a goblin, complete with pointy ears, essentially it's a physical representation of Chad or Kilroy. The game is supposed to come with a magic gold coin. Uh, unfortunately, my one is missing that coin, so instead I just went and I bought a uh, strong magnet uh, which can be used instead. In this game there's actually only one player token and all players move this playing piece. Obviously he's a wizard, you can see he's got his uh, wizard hat here and he's got his cloak on which is all decked out with stars and moons. Uh, in the French game he is called Magnus but otherwise he's just a wizard. He's got rather pointy ears here so I don't know if he's some kind of goblinoid wizard and in his hand he's got his magic wand here and this is articulated so that you can actually tell with this whether he has got the gold or if he's dropped it. 
So at the bottom of him, he has a magnet here, and this magnet can move up and down. It's attached by a pivot to his arm, so that when he is connected to the gold, the magnet has been pulled down by magnetism and his wand is raised. And whenever he lets go of the gold because of the walls in the maze, then his arm will drop and you know that there is no longer any gold being carried by him. So you can see when he's brought in above the gold coin, it activates his wand so you know that he is next to the coin. The actual magic maze itself is made from these nine tile pieces. You can see that each one of these sets of three has got a different kind of maze pattern on it. These ones, obviously, these three, doesn't matter how you turn them, they're all gonna always be the same pathway through there. These three here can either go this way or they can go that way to make a slightly different path. These ones here, then they can go four different ways. They can either be set like this, that's going to give you a different path, that's going to give you a different path, and that's going to give you a different path as well. Now obviously you can mix these up however you want, you can turn them, and doing this means that you're going to have your own maze uh, which could be completely different each time and according to the box and how many different ways you could arrange these and do them there's over a million different combinations of mazes available so once you've made your maze you kind of you have them all together and by moving the wizard on top of the maze because this is obviously this is the bottom of the maze you don't actually see this but by moving the wizard on the top of the maze you've got to try to move the coin through all these hidden walls to the corner to be able to get it back. And you can move it however you want, but obviously at some points as you move the wizard, it's gonna to get to a point where it tries to go through a wall and it can't get past the wall. And so when that happens, the wizard's gonna keep moving, the magnet's gonna stay where it is. And when the magnetism lets go of the magnet, the wizard will drop his wand and you will know that there is a wall there. So when we're setting up this game, all of these pieces are upside down so we can't actually see what the maze is like. And you can randomly move them about and change it so you get your own maze which is different each time. The coin, the magic coin, goes in the centre so you can still see it through this little hole in the middle here. And then once that is together, then the game board goes, can't, oh, I can't get it on. <laughs> the game board goes on top. So once the game board is set up, each of the players takes a different colored corner. If you just got two players, they try and go for opposite, diagonally opposite corners. If you've got more than two players, then you just spread out around the board. The red player is trying to get the wizard back to the red hole over here. Purple player is trying to get the wizard back to the purple hole so that the magic coin can come up through the hole and they've got that coin and they've won the game. So we're gonna take it in turns moving the wizard across the board. We're gonna start with the red player and you just move him as many times as you want in any direction you want until his hand drops. If his hand drops, you know that there is a, a wall underground there. So you're gonna to have to mark it and stop and leave him there. The next player then moves him from the position that he stopped in and they're trying to get him to their own hole. Oh, and there's another wall there. So then it goes back to the red player. And we've seen that there's a wall here as well. And then it's back to the purple player. Mm. 
and there's a wall here as well. So there's quite a lot of luck involved in this, but you also have to try to memorize where these walls are, the ones that are not marked. Getting close. Ah, oh, but there's a wall there. So as well as the red player trying to remember how they've moved through the maze, the purple player is also trying to remember how that person moved the wizard so that they can get through with, <laughs> without him dropping so they can get as far away from that opposite corner as they can. Red player. Oh, another one there. Then this purple player. Uh, another wall. And then back to red. Another wall there. Then back to purple. Back to red. And a wall here. Back to purple. Wall. Back to red. Ah, so close that time. Now it's back to purple. Oh no! That was not a good move by the purple player because the red player is almost home and he starts from where the wizard gets dropped or stopped. Oh, that was not a good move by red either though that time. So purple. Oh, it's getting really close now. Back to red. Oh no, can't go that way either. So then back to purple. Oh, this is not going too well for either player. Back to red. Oh, that was the last one it could possibly have been. Purple better get it this time, otherwise he is going to lose. And Purple has got the magic coin and has won the game. So there you have it, a really nice simple game for two to four players that's easy to set up, easy to explain and has no complex rules. Playing time can vary a lot in this game, depending on mainly luck and how the maze has been set up at the beginning. I mean, sometimes you can play this game with two people and you could have won the game within one or even only two minutes. Other times it will take much, much longer. It just depends on, as I say, luck and whether you run into those walls or not. Once you start running into the walls though, there definitely is an element of memory needed here. There's no real skill, but you're definitely going to have to use memory to try to remember which path, even if it's not marked out with walls, your opponent or yourself has taken in order to not run into anything. If you're outside of Europe, this is not going to be an easy game to find. Although I have to say this one, I got the Danish version in Britain. so. It, they are out there, they are floating around, but it's definitely not a game that was released in the US and it's not one that you're going to find there easily. If you can find it though, pick it up, have a go. It's a good game and a nice gimmick. Until next time, this is Attic Raiders Retro Reviews.